As a quick heads up for everyone that's watching this right now, make sure you stay for after the review for a cool announcement that I'm going to share with you guys that I know you're going to love. I'm doing a giveaway that you're going to want to be a part of, so make sure that you stick for the end of the actual video. Hey, what's going on everybody out there? My name is Jake James Lugo and welcome to the channel. So let's dive into another fighting game with style with the masters of style in fighting games, SNK. The King of Fighters 14 is a continuation of the series that's a little bit different than some of the previous entries before it, especially ones as of late. But is it a worthy successor of the legacy of SNK and the legacy of the King of Fighters series? Well, let's find out together. This is the King of Fighters 14. Or tan tan, you know what I'm saying, right? The King of Fighters 14 is the next entry of the legendary SNK fighting franchise. While the majority of games in the series have been various dream matches and spin-offs, this one is a continuation of the series' overarching story, taking place years after the last few games. The story is a Russian billionaire named Antonov, a guy who fancies himself as the real world champion, buys the rights to the King of Fighters brand to host a new tournament. He invites everyone, including newcomers and veterans of the KOF tournaments, to join the competition and face him in the finals. But there's crazy stuff at work elsewhere outside of the event, which if you know the KOF series, can take everyone and everything for a wild ride. There's a lot of characters that make up the 19 teams here, including some big fan favorites from many different games. Not everybody from throughout the series shows up here, however, so if you've played these games before, you'll notice a few missing faces. Regardless though, the fighters bring with them all the style and flair the King of Fighters is known for, but is it a good follow-up to this legendary franchise and does it live up to the legacy SNK is known for? It actually is, believe it or not, especially if you love flashy fighting games with a heavy emphasis more on gameplay. Now I do have to mention again that even though there are certain characters from throughout the legacy of the King of Fighters series that don't appear in this game, there is potential for them to appear as DLC, even though there is a couple of them already that are available as downloadable content. And even though that's pretty cool, again, this kind of like opens up the wide array of characters that could be included in this game. It is a little annoying, I'm not gonna lie, when they tease that some of the characters that are DLC, you could actually fight against them in the arcade mode and some of the other modes when the computer plays as them. Unfortunately, you're not able to select them if you don't own the DLC, so that is a little bit of a bummer, but at least they're still acknowledging that the roster can grow from what it already is. And believe me, it is a huge roster as it stands. Unlike the previous game, which was King of Fighters 13, that was more 2D animation and it's something that looked really freaking good, the King of Fighters 14 goes to this 2.5 style that's very similar to what they're doing with Street Fighter now over at Capcom, but with the King of Fighters, this just has its own very unique look. Unfortunately, when the game first came out, it didn't really look all that great. A lot of people had a lot of problems with the way that certain characters look, with some of the effects. It just didn't look all that great. It looked kind of like a PS2 slash PS3 game, but after a few updates, the game looks really freaking good right now. If you're a fan of fighting games that have a really cool sense of aesthetic, you'll love the backgrounds in The King of Fighters 14. They're very detailed, there's a lot of stuff going on in the background, even though it's not too distracting from the action that's happening in the foreground. That's something that you also got in The King of Fighters 13, but in 14, it still looks freaking good in this engine. Now, another thing I should touch on is that the story of The King of Fighters 14 is very mediocre and very shallow at best. It's not really that detailed, it's not as elaborate as other fighting games that are out there. It's very simple and straightforward and to the point. Some people might actually like something like this, but now that we got games like Mortal Kombat, Injustice, what they're doing with Street Fighter Now and Street Fighter V, things are a little bit much more crazier and complex with those stories and they're presented in a better fashion. What we get here with King of Fighters 14, it just seems kind of blah. Really, that's like the best way I could describe it. The other thing that really bugged me with the story mode of King of Fighters 14 is that the aesthetic and the presentation of it is very inconsistent. You have some cutscenes that are done in the same type of engine that they look really good, at least, you know, in comparison to these still frames that you get at the very end. I'm not really a fan of something like that. I like things to be consistent throughout, and I would have loved to see, like, ending cutscenes or just endings in general for each one of the teams presented in the same type of engine that the game is presented. Now, I am a fan of anime-style cutscenes, and that would have been cool to get as, like, part of the endings and stuff, but I would have rather at least seen more cutscenes that were done in the game's engine rather than the stills that we got at the very end of every single arcade mode or story mode, which again, it's an arcade mode. It's not really a story mode per se. The game calls it a story mode, but in actuality, it's really an arcade mode. Now that we got through all the aesthetic type of stuff, by the way, I do want to mention the music is really kick ass. Let's talk about something that's a little bit more important to us, and that's the gameplay, which again, if you've been playing the King of Fighters for a very long time, you're actually going to like what's here. There's some pretty cool stuff going on. What you're getting in the King of Fighters 14 is exactly what you want to see if you played any of these games in the series. KOF focuses on 3 on 3 matches in an elimination format, but it does have your traditional 1v1 versus matches as well. Like some of the later KOF games, every fighter has their arsenal of special attacks and super combos, but you also have the ability to enter a max mode to give yourself a boost in your attack power and use stronger special attacks. 
Unlike games like Street Fighter, however, KOF gives the entire roster many global tools to work with, not just their unique special moves. Everyone can roll on the ground to evade projectiles, execute a knockback attack in order to give some distance from an opponent, and even use just defense blocks against attacks in those clutch moments. But if you're all about the beatdowns and are a bit of a button masher, the game also has rush combos you could use at any time. Mashing the jab button when you're up close to an opponent can do a quick combo that ends with a super move, but only if you have enough meter stored up to do so. This might be something great for newbies, but skilled players would know how to utilize it much better. The downside of using rush combos frequently, however, is that the damage you do is reduced and can waste a lot of your super meter pretty quickly if you're careless. Overall, the competitive peeps will keep away from rush combos in favor of more damaging combos, while everyone else will still enjoy doing something flashy in a matchup. Outside of this, however, KOF 14 is pretty much your standard fighting game for the fans of the genre. There isn't a crazy over-the-top story mode or anything that gets away from the fighting too much. What you see is pretty much what you're getting here, only it looks pretty good on screen. Now let me be clear about one thing in particular. I'm not a big fan of the rush combos that they have in this game, even though they're very similar to what you get in something like Dragon Ball Fighters, which is basically auto combos. I do understand why they are a thing. This is actually something that's really good to get new players involved with the series, especially if you're someone that's not too competitive in fighting games. This gives you an easy way to, in order to be competitively viable against your friends and actually feel like you're doing something. However, if you really want to get into the meat and potatoes of this game, you're going to want to avoid rush combos, even though they do have their place in the competitive scene. A lot of people that are out there that are much more in tune with the technical aspect of fighting games will find different ways around this, not only to utilize them, but also to find much more better damage in combos. That's actually pretty cool and again if you're that type of person this game will really kind of like have a bunch of stuff for you to chew on. One thing I do want to comment on that wasn't all that great was the online multiplayer of the King of Fighters 14. It actually was kind of mediocre. There isn't a lot of people playing this game online right now. There was a lot more people during release but it didn't really have as long as a shelf life compared to other fighting games when they come out. Like you'll still find people playing Street Fighter 5, you'll still find people playing Soul Calibur and all these other games that are out there but with the King of Fighters 14 it really didn't have a lot of people that were really down for it for a very long Long time online so it's a little bit more difficult to get matched up with people when you're trying to find an online matchup unless you open up your region selection which could be a little bit annoying especially if you want good connections the few matches that I did play online were okay they did have some problems here or there especially with the slowdown and the lag but again depending on your connection your experience might vary but at least in my personal experience playing the game for this review I didn't really have that many great matches I didn't really play that many matches online because of these issues if I really had to summarize my thoughts about the gameplay of the King of Fighters 14, it is pretty good overall. There's a lot of different playable fighters, there's a whole bunch of different tech for you to mess with during a matchup. There's a lot of great stuff in here, especially if you value more gameplay over everything else in your fighting games. And speaking of everything else, let's talk a little bit about the extra content in the King of Fighters 14, which, again, it's another hit and miss depending on who you are. The King of Fighters 14 isn't really that meaty when it comes to extra content. You could get new fighters as bonus DLC, which is always a great thing for fighting games, but the other extras in here are somewhat shallow. The other single player modes like Trials, Survival, and Time Attack are as basic as you'd expect. There is a gallery mode that has a variety of artwork and sound clips you could look at, but there really isn't much outside some legacy artwork from earlier entries of the series. It could be a chore to unlock everything in the gallery, especially when you aren't given a hint on how to do so. Items in the gallery unlock randomly by just simply playing the game in any mode. I wish this wasn't the case, however, and somehow was just able to buy the unlockables with in-game money in a store or something, or even complete some tasks to get specific things that I might want. The unlockables aren't bad, but I can't really appreciate them as much as I might want to. And don't expect many bonuses from playing multiplayer online. You're only diving into this game for the competitiveness. If you were hoping for anything else beyond that, like in other fighting games that are out there, you're going to be a little bit disappointed. Okay, if I'm going to be totally honest with you guys, some of the artwork that's included here is pretty freaking cool. There's a lot of Shinkira artwork, which is basically legacy artwork from the entire KOF series, and that stuff is pretty freaking awesome. However, I still at least wish that I would have been able to pick and choose certain items that I can unlock, rather than just getting everything at random. I don't feel like I'm actually going anywhere, or at least trying to get certain things that I think could be kind of cool, just by unlocking different things at random. If I want to get to more of the artwork rather than the sound clips, I should at least have that choice. In my personal opinion, it would have been a lot better if there was like some sort of in-game store that I earn currency from the matches and other stuff that I do that I could just be able to purchase certain items. That would have been a whole lot easier trying to complete the entire gallery rather than just doing everything kind of blind and not really understanding like what exactly I need to do. This doesn't apply to like the endings of the arcade mode or the story mode here and there. It mostly applies to the artwork, the sound clips, and all these other things that are a little bit much more different than just the video clips. 
In addition to that, you do unlock the two final bosses of the story mode, which is pretty cool. All you have to do is just basically finish the story mode in order to get them. That's pretty fine. You don't really get any other unlockable fighters, which unfortunately that's kind of more geared towards DLC. But I at least still wish that there was a little bit more for me to chew on just besides the artwork, which again, as a KOF fan, I was hoping that there was a little bit more there for me to get excited about. I also do want to touch on some of the extra modes. Again, we have the time attack, we have survival, we have, uh, what is it, training mode, we have the trials. All that stuff is pretty standard, and again, it's very shallow and basic for a fighting game that's more emphasized on gameplay. I wish there was, again, maybe some other modes there to kind of mix things up a little bit, but you can only really do so much with the King of Fighters. However, that being said, there are other fighting games like Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat that have found interesting and different ways to present the fighting and present this type of gameplay in a little bit of a different style or something very unique and kind of like really off the wall. The towers in Mortal Kombat are a perfect example of this. But if you just take everything at face value of what the game has to offer, KOF 14 is really kind of shallow in its presentation of the extra content. Again, I wish there was a little bit more there. So overall, did I enjoy my time playing through the King of Fighters 14? I think it's a very enjoyable game if you love more gameplay than anything else in your fighting games. If you're not really a fan of story, or you don't really care about that extra content and stuff, the King of Fighters 14 will be right up your alley. Not only you're getting some fun gameplay that's really good for those that are fighting game enthusiasts, you're getting a style, flair, and personality injected into this that SNK is really known for that really makes this series really stand out compared to all the other fighting game competitors that are out there. It's fun, it's fast, it's crazy, it's got style, it's got looks, it's got flair, and all this other stuff that I think is really cool, and I think you guys should definitely check it out. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the King of Fighters 14. I enjoyed my time playing through it. I wish I could have gotten actually to play a little bit more online than what I actually did, but still, I had fun with my time with it. It was actually kind of cool, and again, I just love this series. It just looks different. It feels a little bit different than what you get with something like Street Fighter or any other fighting game that's out there. It's just something that just overall looks kind of cool, to be honest with you guys. But those are just my thoughts about the game. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section down below. Tell me, are you a fan of the King of Fighters? Do you love the King of Fighters 14? What what are some of your favorite characters? Tell me all about that stuff in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to leave a like on this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos just like this one. I have a ton of reviews, I have a ton of shows and podcasts, there's a lot of great content I know you guys are going to love. And don't forget guys, I am also on Patreon. For the dollar level or higher, you're going to get a ton of exclusive content and early access to my new videos, including reviews just like this one. So again, links in the description box below, there's a whole bunch of great stuff I know you guys are really going to love. But now it's time to reveal something very special that I know all of you are going to be very surprised about. I'm actually partnering up with Crunchyroll to do a little giveaway for all of you guys here on this video right now. What am I giving away? I'm giving you all a chance to win a Black Clover prize package that features not only a Black Clover t-shirt, which is pretty damn cool, but also a Season 1 Part 4 DVD, Blu-ray, and digital bundle of Black Clover. You guys definitely need to check this out. Along with this, the bundle also comes with a free month of Crunchyroll Premium. That way you guys will be able to watch a whole bunch of anime, including Black Clover and a bunch of other stuff that they have on there. I myself use Crunchyroll. I check out a whole bunch of series that are on there that are really freaking cool. Again, as an anime fan, it feels like it's a necessity that you guys definitely need to have. So how do you join up with this giveaway? All you guys need to do is make sure you guys leave a comment down below with your favorite anime and also make sure that you like this video. But if you want even more bonus points to be considered as the winner, make sure you're also subscribed to my YouTube channel and make sure also that you guys are pledging over to my Patreon page. At the dollar level or higher, you get even more bonus points to be part of these giveaways. You don't have to do all this stuff, but make sure that you guys do leave a comment and also like this video in order to be considered for the actual giveaway. I'm curious to see what you guys choose as your favorite anime series down there, especially again if you guys are fans of Crunchyroll or fans of Black Clover. I want to see all that in the comment section down below. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys. Hopefully I get to see a bunch of you join up with this giveaway. It's something that I've been trying to do for a while. I want to give you guys some more opportunities to get some free stuff and some other cool things that we could get going on with this YouTube channel. I will talk to all of you again very soon. Peace out and stay epic, everybody. Thanks a ton for watching this new video, everybody. I really appreciate all the support out there. I hope to see a bunch of you joining up on this giveaway. I'm trying to do more cool things just like this in the nearby future. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out some of these videos I'm going to put here on the side for you. I will talk to all of you again very soon. Peace out and stay epic, everybody.